What is up guys? Joel Black Death Thrash Doom once again and it is time for another collection update. This one is from a few months ago and a trip to the Bay Area that I took with my girlfriend. And of course if you go to the Bay Area you have to hit up Amoeba Music in San Francisco. One of my favorite freaking music stores in the world and every time I go there I spend way too much money as was the case this time. Didn't walk out with a ton of stuff but walked out with some stuff and my girlfriend also walked out with some stuff as well and I'm going to show her few pickups as well because they are awesome. So we got a stack of CDs, we've got like four or five vinyl, and we've got one cassette actually. I said I wouldn't be showing cassettes very often, but I did remember that I picked up a cassette recently. That was not part of this trip, but I thought I'd throw it in, otherwise this would be kind of a shorter episode. There's also one other album I threw in, but there's a good explanation as for why. First of all, wandering around, I was looking for the new Blue Dots Nord, and instead, I ended up finding the old Blue Dots Nord, finding Ultima Thule, which I believe is their first album, and one that I've never really been familiar with, admittedly. I always wanted to pick up a copy of this album. Um, I mean, I don't care if it's original press or not. It's obviously not original press, but uh, this is a weird fucking album. Uh, in a good way. It's just very, like, the cover's very... It encapsulates what's going on in the music. It's just icy and foreboding and fucking weird sounding and just like cosmic already from the start just kind of cosmic and weird even though Blue Dots Nord does not stick with that sound and they do shift between sounds uh, that's one that I've never really heard them go really back to that's got a very original sound on it but anyways I did indeed find the new Blue Dots Nord also in a goddamn digipack of course everything's in a digipack these days but this album is fucking terrifying in the best way possible just ready to summon the old ones through incantations of black metal glory and uh, great presentation amazing art very fucking scary music and I do like how subdued in the mix the vocals are it makes it even more cosmic sounding and terrifying and just the production on this is in itself a force to be <laughs> reckoned with it's just obviously contender for album of the year in my opinion just so fucking good and something I've talked about probably too much already. Why am I holding it up with this arm? That's fucking awkward. Ara, uh, try two, Himera. This is fucking excellent, epic, majestic black metal from Switzerland. Three-piece. Uh, there's a chick on vocals whose vocals kind of remind me of, like, Hikade Enthroned. Just like a screech that's fucking amazing. And, uh, yeah, this stuff can be melancholic and haunting and amazing. And Ara is... I cannot stress enough how good this band is they've only been around for like four years and they've already put out four albums uh they've had an ep out and they have a new ep coming out or maybe it's already out by this time but are a very prolific and an amazing band if you like just sweeping majestic black metal then you'll probably like that and speaking of sweeping majestic black metal we've got cults of fire with uh, triumvirate right i think it's called triumvirate i don't know how to pronounce that but yeah, Triumvirate. This is the first Cult of Fire band. These guys are from Belgium, and they also play majestic, epic, atmospheric black metal that is sometimes very epic and and sweeping and and almost cosmic, and then at other times vicious and just a black metal attack. Great stuff. I haven't spent a ton of time with this album, but I am a Cult of Fire fan. In fact, here's my other Cult of Fire CD. I fucking love this album as well. If you're not familiar with Cult of Fire from Belgium, get on that train. In fact, check out their live show. If you can find the live show on YouTube, it's the Cult of Fire live show. I'll try to link it down below, but man, that show is amazing. That's actually how I found out about Cult of Fire, but they are such a good band. Speaking of amazing bands, and amazing bands with really good live shows available too, this band also has a great live show on YouTube that I've seen recently, but uh, Spectral Wound, Infernal Decadence. This is the album before the one everybody knows. I don't know if this is their first album or not. I don't remember if they have two albums or three. I feel like this is their first. But, um, yeah, everybody knows A Diabolic Thirst, the new album, but this is the album before it, and it is fucking fantastic. It is just riffy, speedy black metal, full of hatred and fucking darkness, man. This is actually a very dark album. Not dark in, like, a DSBM way, but just fucking... Overall, a very dark performance, dark riffs, and uh, majestic blackness. Fucking epic, epic chainsaw attack with the guitars. 
Uh, great production, really fitting for the music. If you haven't checked out Spectral Wound, highly recommended. Uh, though I will say, so far I like the Diabolic Thirst a little bit more than that one, but I haven't spent nearly as much time with this one as I only got it, you know, a few months ago. Uh, I was looking for this. <laughs> you know, you, I wander around a lot in Amoeba Music and I'm just like, oh shit, look at this, oh shit, look at this, holy shit, look at this. But sometimes I have a goal in mind, such as Blue Dots Nord, but I also had Incantation in mind. Uh, I'm missing several albums of theirs, and, you know, a couple of them are a little harder to get. And lo and behold, I got one of them, and that's Blasphemy from Incantation, fucking the ultimate death metal band with doom influences. I mean, this is the band that started it all, in my opinion, with that kind of, like, gritty, dripping, fucking death doom darkness. But uh, Blasphemy I've been after for a while. It's not their best album, admittedly, but, I mean, what Incantation album is bad? I don't think they have a bad album. I haven't heard one so far. So it's a good, it's a good album, uh, just not up there in, like, my top three or anything like that. But it comes with slipcover. And look, a fucking jewel case. Actually, a few of these have jewel cases. Kind of nice. But, yeah, I've been after this for a while. And um, there's another to cross off the list. Now, if I could only find Onward to Golgotha, that would be fucking amazing. I have never been able to track down that album. Okay, moving on. And we're keeping with the same theme of uh, Doom-influenced death metal and one of my favorite fucking newish bands. I started listening to this band last year, and uh, yeah, Mortiferum, Preserved in Torment. Fucking goddamn, dude. It does not get any more fucking brutal and fucking harrowing and goddamn dark than this. Mortiferum is just absolutely one of my favorite death metal, death metal bands right now. I can't talk. Um, but yeah, this is on Profound Lore Records, and of course it's a digipack, but it is a beautiful digipack. Really nice presentation, and um, if I remember correctly, the booklet's actually very nice as well. But Mortiferum is just another force to be reckoned with. I love the silver ink on this. But uh, they're from Olympia, Washington. I thought for some reason these guys were East Coast. These guys sound nothing like most of the shit that is around here in the Pacific Northwest. But um, yeah, Mortiferum, fucking amazing shit. And so I threw in this album with it. I did not get this at Amoeba Music, but I figured I'd throw this in as well because I never showed this before. And I got this, I believe, last year for Christmas from my girlfriend. And it's Mortiferum's first album, Disgorged, Disgorged from Psychotic Depths. And this is a fucking monster of an album. It is a fucking beast. And this is another band where you can find an incredible live show online, uh, on YouTube. And just crushing, crushing Death Doom. One of my favorites. Just so goddamn good. I have a hard time picking between the new album and the old album. I think the old album might win by just a eensy weensy bit. But, uh, alright, so let's get to the vinyl. And then I have one cassette that I just randomly was like, oh yeah, I forgot to I forgot to show this. And that one did not come from Amoeba. But all this came from Amoeba. I got one vinyl that I was like fucking so stoked about. And then my girlfriend got four vinyls, which she was very stoked about. And honestly, I am too, because they're I think I think they're all bands I showed her, so but uh, I I'm a proud boyfriend right now. But yeah, I was stoked to find this for ten fucking dollars. Archon and Faustus, Perdition and Sanibalist. Fucking what? When I saw this, I gasped. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Fucking one of my favorite albums of all time. I fucking love Archon and Faustus. One of my favorite bands of all time. And uh, finding this for $10 is just insane. It's just got a, you know, a printed sleeve with the lyrics on it. And some dark photos, you know. And it's just a black vinyl, but it's in great shape. It's got the uh, Archon and Faustus logo on it, which is always great. But, yeah, I was a very happy man to find that. And then, my girlfriend found some amazing shit. Now, as you guys may know, I don't really collect vinyl too much. That I couldn't pass up on. You know, stuff like S.O. Trillum I can't pass up on. There's, there's a few things I'll buy on vinyl, but generally I don't really collect vinyl. But she does, and she has excellent taste in music. First of all, now you're going to be like, what the fuck, it has a defect on it? It does. But... She got this for $5 because there was a pressing defect on side B, and I think like one of the song skips, or maybe two of the song skip, but uh, the rest of the album's fucking fine. $5! $5! Would you have bought this for $5? Leave a, leave a comment down below if you think that she got 
ripped off for that, or uh, I think that was fucking great. Honestly, if she hadn't picked this up for five dollars, I would have picked it up for five dollars. So really cool. Oh, and what's neat about this is the uh, the vinyl has a sleeve just like the uh, CD does. So that's pretty fucking neat. I don't want to mess with her vinyl too fucking much. But uh, there's that. Put that the sleeve in a second. And then this one I showed her like when we first started dating because she really likes Doom and she really likes like fucking dirty, dirty fucking Doom. And I was like, oh, have you ever heard Moss from the UK? And she was like, no. I was like, fucking, you gotta listen to Moss. They're fucking ama amazing. They're album Sub Templum is like the slowest album I've ever fucking heard in my life. It's like each riff is like 45 seconds long. It's fucking insane. But yeah, I haven't heard this one before and uh, I don't think she's heard it yet either. I'm not going to take that out of the sleeve. There's like this, there's a little strip right here and there's a strip that goes all the way around it as well, but it's a sick looking vinyl and it was $8. So Moss, I think this is an EP. It is the uh, Eternal Return. And yeah, if you haven't heard Moss before, at least check out Sub Templum. I, I can't speak for this album yet, but Sub Templum is fucking incredible. If you like, if you like Doom, that is fucking incredibly slow, a snail's pace. Uh, this one, these next two are still sealed, uh, so I'm not gonna take them out. But this is fucking stoked, and she paid a pretty penny for this one. But uh, the new Plebeian Grandstand, fuck yes absolutely destructive black death power violence like i don't even know how to describe these guys but these fuckers are amazing they're from france and it's just absolute i'm gonna say it again a wall of fucking noise just assaulting you at all times and sometimes just dizzying and terrifying and yeah this is a crazy album their last album was crazy uh, if you're not familiar with Plebeian, Plebeian Grandstand, however you pronounce that, fucking godly. Fucking godly. Although I can only listen to that once in a while because it's such an assault on your senses. And my favorite vinyl pickup was not one of mine, but I was stoked she picked it up because I'll get to listen to it when she opens it up. But uh, Suffering Hour, The Cyclic Reckoning, fucking yeah, dude. <laughs> fucking yeah. Suffering Hour from the United States. There's uh, members from... I want to say Colorado and then Michigan? Something like that. But, um, yeah, amazing band. Just fucking amazing. Uh, Death-tinged black metal. Um, technical guitar wizardry. And darkness abundant with two, two different types of vocals. When these guys play live on stage, the dude uses two different mics with two totally different sounds. It's fucking incredible, and it sounds like he does the same thing on the album, but Suffering Hour, if you like crazy, cantankerous, out of left field death metal with a black metal influence, then Suffering Hour is for you. I can't imagine nobody's heard this because, my fucking god, Suffering Hour is one of my favorite bands. I'm kind of jealous that she got that vinyl, because I have, like, Two albums of theirs on CD. I have a huge tapestry. I've got a couple shirts. Like, I'm a huge Suffering Hour fan. All right, the last thing. Uh, I just threw this in there because I keep forgetting about it and keep forgetting about it. And like I said, if I didn't throw in a couple more things, this would have been a little bit shorter. But we got one cassette, and this is fucking highly recommended. Although, getting this cassette probably isn't going to be very easy anymore because this is, like, limited to 50 copies. But these guys have a new album out, Sumerian Tombs. And I, I gotta tell you guys, you gotta watch out for these guys. They're German, black metal, they're on Van Records now. This is not on Van Records, this is on some record label I had never heard of before. But this is As Summer Throws at Night. This is on YouTube, I'll try to link everything down below. Um, this, I heard it, it just, it randomly popped up in my uh, suggested to you on YouTube. And I gotta admit, YouTube does a pretty good job with that as far as music. Not with videos so much, but with music, they know what the fuck to recommend. And um, I just saw this cover and was like, I have to hear this. And it's just a three song EP. And I immediately fell in love. It's uh, fucking gnarly black metal with tons of crazy riffs, amazing fucking dark production. And at first, this band seems like they're just black metal. Like, they're just black metal. 
really good black metal, but, you know, just kind of standard. I have to say, the new album that's out, the name escapes me right now, but the new album that's out that's on Van Records, uh, it's got some Ruins of Beverast vibes on it, and crazy because, you know, Van Records and from Germany, so I guess they were influenced by them, but, yeah, there's definitely some, like, black metal, harsh black metal mixed with, like, the Ruins of Beverast vibes. Uh, I highly suggest... Sumerian Tombs, and keep an eye out for this band because I see great things from them, hoping that they fucking keep putting out material. But that's all I have for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. What was your favorite release that I got? Or was it something that my girlfriend got? Because she has amazing taste in metal as well. And uh, what have you picked up lately? Leave a comment down below. That'd be awesome. Give the fucking thumbs up thing. That'd be cool. And subscribe if you want to see more. That's the best way you can support the channel. Thank you very much for watching. You guys rule, and keep in metal.